This video is not for kids. This may contain cussing, suggestive themes, and or triggering topics. Anything said in this video is alleged and not to be taken seriously. This video nor child does not promote or encourage illegal activities. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allow it made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comments, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is as use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. And warning again, the following images and or content may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. the video that I am so serious about her is it's the reason why I wanted to do it on camera I wanted you all to see my face no hiding behind the microphone while I touch on the subject this long overdue of racism in the royal family a problem that High Commissioner Seth George Ramica says still exists in a subtler form though or not to mention the slave trade reparations yes especially after Prince Harry said in the statement that it must acknowledge their past wrong. That was clearly an open-ended concern and we need to dive deep. In order for you all to understand what I'm talking about, you all need to know the slave trade history and it will shock you. With that said, we need to go back. It is bad enough for the Church of England to have played an abominable role in the African slave trade, including bishops who owned slaves, but worse when Queen Elizabeth I turned out to be one that sponsored pirate John Hawkins, Elizabeth I, yes, oh yes, not only, you know, did she partner up with John Hawkins by renting him the use of a slave ship, now this huge old 700 tons navy ship, the song, we will wait till Jesus come to carry our loved ones home, get this, refer to Hawkins' slave ship. The original meaning of that song was meant for the slaves going back home to Africa. This was also what Hawkins had promised them. They believed them, hence they put to music to their expectation of going home. Many sacred English hymns and verses and lines which also resonate with the ancestors dream of returning to their homeland. That never happened. Listen closely to the Negro spiritual songs used by the people both as their version of for the masters who may be listening while subtly consolidating and gobbleizing defiance for the slave system. Still away, still away home to glory. I don't have long to stay here. The, sl the slave subliminally understood here mean on this plantation. I have always been fascinated by the sophistication and sense of humor, even in their oppression and dehumanization times, always playing the fool to catch the wise and the powerful. You see, Pirate John Hawkins was not the first Englishman to trade in slaves, but he was the first to run the triangular trade from Africa to Americans and back to England, making a profit from every stop for over 150 years. The British royal family, listen carefully, not only owned, but monopolized by the slave trade. The story is told that when Queen Elizabeth heard that, he, that England was trading in slaves, she cried. And then she was shown the products like sugar, salt, cocoa, coffee, gold, pearls, etc. being brought to England and immediately became a partner in the trade. Oh yes. The so-called Elizabethan period was financed with money from slavery and the slave trade and their constant digs in Africa. Everything, you know, they have was stolen from Africa. Oh, I'm still not done yet. The queen who wished to preserve the renaissance atmosphere of her range regularly sent pirate John Hawkins to get slaves by any means necessary. She knew that her country's weak economy could not support their artistic pursuit. She enjoyed and wished to see it continue. Yes, ching ching. And the slave trade apparently was an irresistible open market. Ironically, her favorite model was the Latin saying, Etasia in translation I see and keep silent. The model they still live by, hence made market scrutiny in their country. 
So even after the slave trade was abolished in 1807, the British, gracious queens, <laughs> and king's involvement in the barbaric system of slavery remained, remained unabated. Oh yes, hey, they had over 1,600 ships and 150,000 slaves until they were later seized by the British patrol after, you know, 1807. Because greedy leeches, monarchs forgot they had signed into law to abolish the slave trade and they were breaking the very law that they enacted. <laughs> and by 1632, the British monarch Charles I, hence who Prince Charles was named after, yeah, and is the King James of the Holy Bible, the second sung, and yes, he was half black, gave a monopoly license to a private company to trade in slaves from Africa. Yes, black owned slaves. Oh, don't get me started about the Egypt kings, queens, and pharaohs and how they treated their servants slash help and entertainment. That would be another video. But I give you a hint. Check out the late king of pop Michael Jackson's video. His music video, Remember the Time? Very accurate. Oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, his father, King James I, had earlier done the same thing, which led blood between the parliamentarians and the monarchy and resulted in the abolition of that arrangement by the parliament in 1618. So it was the major part of the reasons for the start of the English series of civil wars which saw Oliver Cromwell beheading the king in 1649 thereby abolishing the British monarchy and becoming the title of Lord of Protector of England. Which means is that when Jamaica was invaded by the Pan and the Venerable forces in 1655, no queen or king was on the British throne that had been by Cromwell. Oh yes. Chief Justice John Bradshaw, who sentenced the king to death, is buried there in Jamaica at Dunhill in the parish of Trumony. Oh yes. Ew may be listed on the parish of St. James in some record, but both are correct as that eastern part of St. James was called off and joined with the western part of St. Anne to create the parish of Trelawney in 1770. It was immediately after the restoration of the monarchy that John's Bradshaw body was removed from the Westminster Abbey by his son and reburied in Jamaica. Oh yes. You see this period is when the British monarchy was abolished and is known in English history as the Interregnum. Then in 1660, after the death of Cromwell, the monarchy was restored with Charles II ascending the throne. Charles II was the grandson was the grandson of King James I. Yes, the royal family is half black. Although that doesn't matter. However, the English slave was still fully monopolized by the British Royal Family, the Royal Gambia Company, the Royal Adventurers Company, and the Royal African Company were all owned by the British Royal Family. Oh, yes. Hey, England became so rich through the exploitation of slaves, gold, and ivory from the Guinea coast that a coin called the Guinea in salute in the vast resources, human and physical, was ordered by the monarchy to be minted. The guinea was the largest de denomination of English currency, valuing 21 shillings, a favorite of lawyers whose fees on average amount to five guineas. The carelessness lies that were recorded for future African generation consumption with the English and their domestic allies they did so clearly believe that there were never come to a time when this whole corpus of nonsense will be exposed by the children of the slaves yet unborn. With that said, we are here now in the flesh, begun to dismantle brick by brick. Can cannibal stories tremble in their boots out of fear that as the truth about our history unfolds shortly and quickly across the country, they will be exposed for misleading people with such gusto about our story, which they knew little or nothing about, but thought they did. As we all know, the broader context of Europeans hijacking and black history explained why the enslavement of our ancestors have been filled with so much brinkmanship, disconnectedness, and confusion 
in the reportage of the truth about what transpired. There is absolutely no doubt that the ideas of Africa, darkness, and the lack of any trace of civilized history was carefully contrived by the European intellectual community. The negative attitude towards Africa's past was crystallized and set in motion by the well-known German philosopher Wilhelm Frederick Hegel Yes, and his philosophy of history of lies as he stated categorically listen Africa is no historical part of the world because it has no movement or development to exhibit he also said that blacks are incapable of education and culture as we see them as this day such have they always been meaning he wanted to keep blacks in the dark so they won't learn the truth of what they've done or oh, I'm still not done yet because he further demonstrated his racist ignorance by trying to separate Egypt from the rest of Africa when he stated that Egypt does not belong to the African spirit. You see where I'm going with this? Now, listen to me and know that it should be noted that during the 19th century and the better part of the 20th century, a flurry of similar denigrating statements about Black Africa resonated throughout Europe and the rest of the world. Thus were told by Richard Burton, the founding member of the London Anthropological Society and the seasoned traveler in Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, and listen, what these lying plagiarists said. The Negro would not improve beyond a certain point. Oh, I'm not done yet. He continues and said that. Mentally, they remain a child. I know crazy. Others like... Professor A.P. Newton, a European historian, stated explicitly in 1923, and this is when the lies were getting so freaking out of control. Listen to this BS. Africa had no history before the coming of the Europeans. I know. They said this, after stealing so much from Africa, and still is. Oh, I'm still not done yet. Because no remark was more the uh, Professor Hugh Trevor Report of Oxford University, who declared in 1963, perhaps in the future there will be some of the African history to teach, but at the present, there is none. There is only a history of the Europeans in Africa. The rest is darkness, and the darkness is not a subject of history. He then said it serves no useful purpose to amuse ourselves with the unrewarding gyrations of our various tribes and picturesque but irrelevant corners of the globe. That's what he said. Yet in the view of arrogance of European collective attitude, it is a small wonder that the people of the colony of Africa and all the people of African ancestry throughout the world were denied access to their past. They wanted to keep us in the dark. Additionally, it is easily explained the reason that our history is riddled with so much inexactitude, opaqueness, and obfuscation. However, there are enough of children of slaves who are capable of cleaning up the mess handed to Jamaicans, Blacks, Africans of history. Such a shame though. But the counter offensive has already begun seriously knowledgeable people across the island and overseas are coming together. We can do this. We must do this. Because Queen Elizabeth II carries a piece, listen carefully, of this tradition. Have you ever noticed a piece of jewelry that the racist royals carelessly wear? Yes, the Star of the Night Grand Cross, which is the most distinguished order of St. Michael and St. George that's still the highest honor the Queen can award for diplomatic and overseas services. Have anyone ever looked closely at that pendant? Have anyone ever researched it? Well, look closely. Yes, you see the knight with the knife who has wings that do UK colors. Like he's freaking, like he's a freaking angel. And is standing on the black person. He's standing on the black person. Can they get any more freaking blunt? This cross is a mockery and reminder of what they feel about blacks, not to mention all they stole it from the land of Africa. The royal family hasn't earned anything. They've stolen, plagiarized, and killed for everything they have. And for blacks of that country to continue to stand for this, it saddens me. You mock Americans for their fight. I, I see your Twitter feeds and stuff. But your diligence and compliance is far worse. 
Well, that's it. Let me know your thoughts below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.